it's amazing to see that we actually have a choice in every moment on how we use our minds and how we use our intelligence. Most of us learned, and I'm included in that, that I'm a victim to what I'm thinking, feeling, and sensing. And not just that I'm a victim, I also need to constantly be on the watch. Describe what's going on, give a definition, according to the definition, decide what to do with it. For example, if I fear, uh, I feel um, fear of public speaking or anxiety or something like that, I need to take an action in order to fix this wrong thought or wrong emotion and do something about it to change the display of my mind, to change the content of my mind in order to be able to be stable and in order to be of benefit in what I'm doing or to be good in what I'm doing. And this goes on and on and on and on and on with every single data streams. And of course, there are some data streams, thoughts, emotions, sensations, and other experiences. <laughs> That's what we call data streams. Uh, there are some that we are like, okay, I don't really mind, you know, like they're neutral and they're not too much. And of course, there are the neg uh, positive ones as well, like excitement, a sense of confidence, uh, happy news, things like that, that we think, okay, now I need to grab it. You know, like, uh, I don't know if you've been into a, a desperate, intimate relationship where you want to grab your partner and never let them go. <laughs> you know, Bollywood style. <laughs> like, you're my life kind of thing. So we do it with our data streams as well. Like, I'm feeling happy and excited and this and that. Okay, wow, I'm really on the right track. And now I need to <coughs> keep everything in place. I should wake up exactly at the same time in the morning, I should speak with these people, I should read these books, and then I will always and forever have positive thoughts, emotions, and sensations. <laughs> Did it really work for any of you <laughs> for a long time? No? 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 Oh, okay, okay. Checking, checking. <laughs> It didn't work for me, but I did the same thing over and over again. You know, the, the definition of insanity. I've done the same thing over and over again, and I expected different results. But why is that, actually? I did all of that because I wanted to find a place of stability. I wanted to have clarity in my life, harmonized relationships. I wanted to feel good about myself and to make the right choices in life rather than being bombarded by... A, unceasing display of thoughts, emotions, and sensations, data. But I didn't know how, so I kept looking and I kept reading things that defined me as a flawed individual that needs to be fixed, that there's something about me that is wrong. And that's why it's so amazing <laughs> when we hear in the teaching and uh, in the talks that we as human beings are exalted and beautiful and powerful and capable of greatest benefit. When I first heard these things or read them, I was like, what? <laughs> you know, no, 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 that's too, too much. Maybe say that we are okay sometimes, <laughs> that we are good when we feel good. Uh, and, uh, but to state something like that with great confidence that we are naturally perfect exactly as we are, that was beyond what I could comprehend at the time. But I was intrigued because there's such great assurance in the teaching and, and in the videos and the trainers and Candice, of course. So look at your own experience and see how much time was spent in rearranging your data display to a better one. Checking. Okay, months, years, decades of constantly trying to rearrange what doesn't need any rearrangement. And that can be a bit shocking at first when I realized that during the uh, process of the 12 empowerments that, wow, I spent my life doing something that is completely useless, such a waste of time, trying to fix what is already perfect. <laughs> It was just my definition of what perfection is that made me go on a search, that made me seek for something, that made me feel so confused and terrified at times by my, th my own data streams. 
Do you know this thing that you really don't want to think or feel or remember because it will take you feel it will take you down. <coughs> and I had that, especially at night, not being able to fall asleep and suddenly just having a memory of something that happened in the past or a person that I had a challenging relationship with. And immediately I, I was gone. I was like completely lost in giving an independent nature to these data streams and connecting the dots. I'm miserable because of my history, because of my parents, because of my country, because of the current politicians in the political system, because of the star constellation, because of the full moon. Yes, it's because of the full moon. <laughs> and it's not just the full moon, it's the blue moon. Yeah, for sure, that's why I'm... No, it's not just the blue moon, it's also super moon. <laughs> Yes, that's why I feel so miserable and getting excited. I, I made a good story, you know, it can be a great play. The misery, me, as the main star. <laughs> but after a while it's like, why? I'm perpetuate, perpetuating my own misery. And why do I do that? I don't know. So coming across something as clear as the balance view training just sliced all of these stories to brilliant pieces of light. <laughs> opened up my perception in such a way that I could no, no longer view myself as a victim, a flawed victim that needs to be fixed. Speaking to you today, I still have what you can call negative thoughts, emotions and sensations. So my goal before when I thought uh, about open intelligence or awareness or reaching somewhere, I thought that it will mean that I will not have any negative thoughts, emotions and sensations. I thought I will have only positive ones, loving ones. But that's where the introduction to open intelligence is so key. The basic state of all of our data streams, what is it? Stop thinking for a moment and see what remains. When we stop thinking for a moment, there's a sense of alertness, cognizance, the power to know open intelligence which is always on regardless of whether we are thinking or not thinking and see it now in your own experience with the next thought that comes up no matter what it is what allows you to know it it's the power to know open intelligence and this is the direct introduction to the nature of mind the nature of mind been so complicated the, the delivery of it been so complicated by so many people that we think it's so confusing and hard to get there but it's what's looking, it's what's sensing, it's what hearing these words. This is open intelligence, so it can't be complicated because it's already present. And our choice in every moment is to recognize open intelligence for short moments, repeated many times, until this instinctive recognition becomes obvious at all times, not just on Saturdays at 11.20 a.m., or with the star constellation in a specific way, or you with your positive emotions, or me with my negative ones, all of the time. Gaining confidence one short moment at a time until there's complete assurance that no matter what arises in our experience, open intelligence is inseparable from it. Not intellectually, when you hear these things immediately, we go, well, it's separable, meaning not two. <coughs> <laughs> but then we bring a, a metaphor in, like the color blue in the sky are, are not two. Same with our data streams and open intelligence, they're not two things. So all the effort to try to reach somewhere, try to figure out our data streams, is, is just releasing. One short moment is so potent. A short moment of complete relaxation. Like finishing a hard day's work, you know, and you can't wait to just go and like, ah, relax completely. This is a short moment of open intelligence. Short moment when we allow the heavy load of all of these descriptions to just fall to the ground and we see it there, the self-release of the data. No, ma no matter what it is, physical sensations as well. It appears, appears and resolves naturally, without us needing to do anything about it. Doesn't mean not taking care of ourselves, but we can see the self-release of all data streams. <coughs> see it now with your current perception. The misery, can you still? Okay. Try harder. 
you know, see the self-release of the current thought, emotions and sensation as open intelligence, inseparable. And that's very powerful. So the practice is very simple and then in Balance you we, we have so many incredible things and trainings that make this instinctive recognition obvious at all times. And there you see, for example, with something like um, fear of failure or, or any kind of paranoia that we are not good enough and things like that. These are things that I could be a victim of for the rest of my life. Waking up in the morning and feeling not good enough and needing to fix myself and all of that. And, and, and for sure, I spent 20 years thinking about it. And what the conclusion, to share with you the conclusion that I reached? That I'm a loser. It will always be for that. And if I don't want to be a loser, I need to effort a bit more and do a bit more of something in order not to feel like that, have more positive thoughts and emotions. So limiting, such a box of limitation. And many of the questions today, what you asked about is actually seeing that what happens when we allow data streams to be as they are, what releases, and this is what I saw after the 12 empowerments, is such a great wish and aspiration and energy and motivation to be of benefit to all. So rather than me being me as the focus of, of all of my thoughts and emotions and trying to figure out things, when this is gone gradually, one moment at a time, just releasing by itself, suddenly what comes about is such a surge of energy to be of benefit. To see that regardless of what I'm thinking and feeling, I am completely empowered to be of benefit to all. With my own unique strengths, gifts and talents, not, not anything else, not making our benefit, not pretending to be compassionate. <laughs> Have you tried that sometimes? You wake up and you say, I'll be compassionate today. <laughs> and you're already nervous because you, you know it will not last for more than two seconds. But I'll be compassionate. This is what people need to do. And be compassionate. And then you get a phone call from your mom. <laughs> or your ex or this or that. And something happens. and all your good intentions are gone. So something that is reliable and sustainable, to rely on open intelligence, natural compassion arises. The capacity to be of benefit, to see that really you ask for a specific uh, example of the crucial juncture and for me it was really with uh, negative thoughts about myself, feeling like a victim of misery for example, because I felt a lot of my time this wave of misery happening Okay, sorry. Misery, happiness, misery, happiness. And trying to figure out why it's happening, cause and effect and all of that. So that was my main storytelling pastime thing. And paying people also to perpetuate my suffering. Mm -hmm, I understand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's because of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Thank you for making me more victim. So... And that doesn't happen in Ballad's view, though. So you, when you come in the morning so convinced that you are the most miserable person in the entire community <laughs> of Ballad's view, and then what you meet is just great openness. And after a while, this just melts and melts and melts, and we are no longer so convinced that our data streams can be found to have an independent nature. It's brilliant. Any story that you'll bring, any memory, anything we can be clarified. There is a solution. There is a solution to all of these big problems. There must be a simple solution that we can implement in every moment. So the crucial juncture for me, w for the first time, came about instinctively, not intellectually, with something like sadness that I thought a, lo a lot about. And I blamed many, many people and circumstances. And then I saw that I have a choice. I can choose to indulge, avoid, or replace it, or I can choose to take a short moment, no one told me a long moment, a short moment of complete relaxation and see what happens. And there I saw that my stability and happiness, genuine happiness, does not depend on whether I have positive thoughts or negative thoughts. I could see the inseparability of what I described as my greatest enemy. Suddenly it was inseparable from great bliss, openness, and love. 
in a very practical and grounded way. And then I was, wow, that's too good. I want to try it more. I want to try it more and I want to give all of myself to see if it really applies to all data streams. Fear of death, paranoia, sexual desire, um, envy and jealousy, anger, hatred, pride and arrogance. I'm the best in the entire universe. What do I do with that? That's the simple choice in every moment. And this is how, for those of you who are doing the 12 empowerments, it's such an incredible gift. You are in the right place. You are open enough. You are ready enough to give yourself the greatest of all gifts and ending, ending the search and ending the seeking just by being open. It's such a relief. I spoke with someone a few years ago and I said, you know, here we end the search and seeking. And he said, what if I want to continue to search? And I said, Maybe then it's not for you. <laughs> but here it's for people who really are fed up with seeking and wasting time rearranging descriptions. But instead resting deeply in the powers of great benefit and see the accomplishment one moment at a time for the benefit of all. It's not a self-help program. It's for the benefit of all beings. And that's the gift you give yourself in each short moment and to all.